Good evening, everybody. It is 6.30 p.m. on Tuesday, November 23rd, and you are at City Hall for a Common Council of the City of Wausau meeting. Welcome. The first item on our agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. Please join me. All right, the next item on our agenda is roll call. Please press yes. All 11 members are present. Thank you very much. Next item on our agenda is pre-registered citizens for matters appearing on the agenda and other public comment. Uh, the only person I have is uh, Thomas Brown. My name is Thomas Brown. I live at 715 North 5th Avenue in mm -hmm. Boston, Wisconsin. I also have property on Union Avenue. Uh, mm -hmm. I want to talk about three things. Uh, health and safety. I attended the Public Health and Safety Committee meeting this week and just attended the Finance Committee. And retention of public employees, which I get from that committee. And then the State of Wisconsin Neighborhood Investment Fund Program, which I read about in the reader. Health and safety, first thing I want to say about that uh, meeting was the fire chief did an excellent presentation on our need for additional firefighters, and that relates also to the discussion you had in finance committee. You forgot to deny people you're going to hire to increase the safety of the firefighting department. That's an idea that I support. It was also interesting to note that he estimated the cost per employee of $100,000. <clears> that does not include overtime or anything of that sort. So it's very easy for me to figure out what the budget is for the police and fire department. I take the 150 employees, multiply it by 100,000, and it's 15 million. In actual fact, your budget request is for 19.5 in this budget. The second thing I want to talk about is retention. Uh, I just sat in on a discussion that you were possibly considering a $1,000 bonus to, I guess, the unionized employees and not the other people who are non-unionized. Um, I was here a couple months ago asking you to put out a notice that all employees of the city of Wisconsin would be vaccinated. Now, when I listen to these discussions, there's a lot of generalities going on. Let me give you some specifics from Marathon County. If you make two columns, vaccinated, non-vaccinated, for October, the number of cases vaccinated, 655. Non-vaccinated, 2740, which is four times the amount. Hospitalizations, 16 from the vaccinated. 250 from the non-vaccinated, 16 times as many. Deaths, four from the non-vaccinated, 70 from, I'm sorry, from the vaccinated, four, 70 from the non-vaccinated, which is almost 20 times. Retaining employees who are dead isn't going to work. Please figure out a way to either require vaccinations or some rigid testing formula that encourages people who are putting my life and your life in danger to be vaccinated. Thank you. Next item on our agenda is the consent agenda. That's file number 211101 through file number 210108. I would entertain a motion. Motion by Watson. Second by Larson. Any discussion? Nope. Begin voting. Motion passes unanimously. All right, thank you. We are now on to mayor's appointments. We don't have any today. Um, next up is file number 211109. It's a resolution from the Finance Committee adopting the 2022 City of Wausau budget and general property tax to support the same. Motion by Rasmussen. Second by Watson. Uh, Alder Rasmussen. Thank you. Um, as chair of the Finance Committee, I just wanted to communicate that um, I feel that this is a budget that um, we as council members can be proud of um, to serve our public. I think the committee was 
um, pretty much of the consensus that they were proud of their work on this. We hosted three workshops. Um, we also had a CIP committee that looked at capital projects and um, our system committee looked at road projects for next year and we were able to complete our entire process um, without substantial cuts to infrastructure, um, which in you know past years a while back we would do. Um, we also have not cut services that residents appreciate and expect um, and we have also um, been able to um, accomplish the majority of our capital needs for this year. So I'm certainly proud of the committee for its work and I thank all of our city employees and department heads who sharpened up their pencils and went back to the drawing board and brought us a whole lot of supplemental requests that we could rank um, and prioritize to make sure that we were um, getting the work done that we need to do but that we were about as lean as we can get. So thank you everyone for that. Oh, uh, Finance Director Grote. Yeah, so um, the state has a, a form that um, is required in calculating the tax increment portion of our levy and that is typically uh, posted on their website um, you know, mid-November. They were late this year. I checked throughout the day uh, today and it had not been posted, but I just ran between finance and council and it was. Uh, so they do have a small rounding difference. So um, in your resolution, the amount in the resolution is the 32,886,391. And when I put, um, our computation into the state's form, it came out 389 and 19 cents. So just a couple of dollars less. Uh, so if we could use that number, so it's uh, 32886, 389 and 19 cents versus 391. 389 versus 391. <coughs> Is that, would that be, do, uh, do an amendment to the uh, motion then? We're going to wait one second. Okay. We're conferring. Okay. So that would be good because then it will come out to okay. yeah, state form. So we're asking for an amendment to update that number to be $32,886,389 in the, and 19 cents. I might as well. Um, okay. Did, uh, Alder Watson, did you have something to share maybe before we... Oh, I just had a question. Where can you tell us the page in the packet that that change would be located on? Um, well, it would be on the resolution itself in the um, be it resolved last be it resolved second to the last. Oh, you mean the page in the packet, Mary? Um, do you know oh. what page? Just sometimes 120 pages. 22. 22. Thank you. All right. I'm just going to give us a second to think or look. I'm sorry. No problem. I have paper copy. Okay. Is there anybody that would like to offer that as an amendment? I'll offer the amendment to adjust the $2. Okay. We have an amendment, an offer to amend. Uh, here to change the dollar amount to $32,886,389.19. Uh, is there a second? Second by Neil. Um, any discussion on this amendment? Okay, I'm not seeing any discussion on the amendment, so just hold on a second and the clerk will let you know when you can vote. Begin voting. Alder Ryan, if you could vote. I think you might be pushing the wrong button. Motion passes 10 to 1. Okay. All right. And now we have the resolution as amended. Um, any discussion or are we ready to vote? Yes, Alder Killian. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just had a uh, couple questions about uh, two items. The first is the... Uh, uh, one million one hundred uh, thousand. Let me see. One point one million, uh, roughly, for the fleet facility. That's one point one five. What? Uh, what? What specifically do does that uh, cost relate to? 
I believe it is mainly engineering and preliminary work. So at some point, um, you know, we would be needing to come back to actually fund the construction. Is that right, Eric? Could you be a little more granular, perhaps, on, uh, on what that entails? Thank you. These are uh, design fees and, you know, um, really some planning fees and, and determining locations, um, uh, potentially putting renderings together for landscaping, depending on where things are at, to, um, yeah, so really it's all engineering professional services fees. Thank you. And uh, am I, is my understanding correct that with any funds associated with this, that 1300 Cleveland was was taken off the, the table? Uh, the, that was the direction from the city council. Okay. Yep. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. and, and then I have one additional question on a different item. It was on the WAS uh, developer payment, a little two million or more. Yes. Uh, that had been voted on some time ago, but it's in uh, the 2022 budget. So um, only a portion of it was drawn in the 2021 budget. So this basically just reestablishes the the, re the remaining funds for expenditure in 2022. Uh, thank you. And will that likely be drawn in 2022? My understanding is yes. Um, there is uh, additional work that is being contemplated, like the. Um, front of the home um, building that um, the concrete um, foundation or whatever you want to call it, slab, uh, needs to be removed as well as the penny structure, the pennies building would come down. I don't know exactly the timing on that, um, but it's my understanding that the sum of that activity would, um, you know, uh, deplete the rest of the funds. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Alder Ryan. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Mary Ann, can you explain that a little bit further? Are you, is that part of that that the um, council last term voted in to have, or was it like three and a half million to tear down Correct. the mall? And that you're saying as of, as of this point, there still is pieces left on that? Yes. And if, that there's okay. nothing else being planned as additional um, work that was would like done that we're not aware of. Right. This um, basically, I took the amount of the authorized payment, subtracted out the payments to date, and reestablished the budget for 2022 with the funds. Um, that would be left over from the resolution. So wasn't it like three and a half million? Yes. And so as of to date, to date, through the end of the year, what have you found as expenditures? I believe, um, in looking at the document, it looks like about one million one hundred ninety-two thousand was dispersed to date. Okay. And if it is not spent, is that something the city could request the balance to be returned? Well, it's, it's, um, it's being dispersed as it's being spent, so it wouldn't be, there would be no refund needed because they we're not giving the money up front. Okay. Um, I guess uh, for me, I... Some of you might have heard my concerns that, um, and I guess I have learned in Marathon County, there's 150 not-for-profits. And three are actually having their accounting services done for free through the city. And um, that uh, I have been provided information that, that we do have a contract with the Entrepreneurial Center, but I'm not aware of any contract with the River District nor with Wausau Events. Um, they do have executive directors, and as directors, they should have 
in the past been handling budgets and accounting services as well. And with us going to a new accounting software, first time in over 20 years, where there'll be the new system as well as running the old system, and that also the portion for HR and payroll. It seems that with the new year, this is a perfect time for these small not-for-profits um, to get off a sophisticated city county software and to get to something simple. And um, as our fiduciary roles, we are supposed to be looking at how we are spending our money. And I have worked for other not-for-profits. They've never expected to get free accounting. Um, and this has been going on, I guess, since 2006 or 1996. And so it's long overdue. And I would recommend that we, um, as part of the budget, uh, we could, as of tonight, give, give uh, a vote to have those type of services that were done for these organizations, time to go ahead and um, give them notice that they are need to find their own accounting services as of January 1st, 2022. Uh, with the Entrepreneurial Center, we do have a contract, so there's nothing we can do with that. But there is a cost. Um, and, and to say that there hasn't been a cost every year um, is not appropriate. I have sent an email on the city email as of November 11th to Marianne and Becky asking for, as a, as a way to get a ballpark idea of what is uh, the number of checks were that were issued for each of these organizations. And just as a kind of pie in the sky, I estimate, okay, maybe 25 to $50 per check. I still have not got an answer, but I do think we need to plan on either having an agreement um, for those services at which we would expect then additional revenues, or this is a good time to go ahead and give them notice. Again, there is 150 not-for-profits in Marathon County and only three of them are getting their accounting services for free from the city of Wausau. And with my accounting background and that, uh, this is inappropriate and this would be a good time to end this arrangement. Uh, we don't have an agreement from my understanding. I was not shared that. So there is nothing preventing us from uh, breaking ties with Wausau events, as well as the River District. We do have an agreement with the entrepreneurial, so we are responsible for keeping that. But another 147 not-for-profits have figured out how to handle their accounting services. And I think it's time that we get out of this Mary Ann and her department are going to be very busy. Thank you. Thank you. Alder Larson. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Mary Ann, you had said that out of the 3.5 that we had given to tear them all down, that only about 1.9 million has been dispersed? I think 1.1. 1.1? Yeah, I can go. So I, I guess it, that doesn't there. matter, the figures, but. Um, why are we giving more money out when they haven't spent the money we've used, they've used? And, and, and why are we have money in the budget for doing stuff to land that we don't own? I guess uh, I'm going back to an economic development meeting is, is why is our, our, you know, I understand WAS is a for-profit op operation, you know, and I just, uh, um, I, I guess I'm curious as to as to do they provide you with uh, with receipts with the money they spend? Yes. So this and is based on the developer agreement specified that they would submit draw requests for 
uh, payment after the expenditures had been uh, incurred. And so the work, for example, this past summer, uh, the de demolition company would work and at the end of a month, they would send us a draw request. Those payments then are made to a title company uh, who then disperses the funds appropriately. I guess so what I'm saying is why, is, uh, why are we paying for because to do stuff that for land that we don't own? Council adopted a resolution um, supporting a developer's agreement with WAS for the redevelopment of the mall, basically for the demolition um, and pad ready services. Um, is there a way we can go back through that contract? I don't believe so. I mean, you first council assigned uh, one agreement and then they modified it. I don't believe that there would be any cause to renegotiate that contract now. Well, I, I guess there would be cause if there's millions of dollars involved and that's, that's just my my thoughts and there's I see too many other priorities in this city than just just keep tossing money to was uh, I mean they you know they as it was heard on a, on a, another meeting they did come to us like they think we're an ATM you know and, uh, this isn't a disbursement of more than what you had agreed to already this is just completing the project for transparency purposes we rebudget the funds because we need to reestablish the budget so really, this is just reestablishing the budget related to the funds that were left over after the last draw. Thank you. And while it is possible to rescind actions, you have to employ a legal analysis. And if it's been the contract, which would be the development agreement here, has been substantially relied upon by the other party, we would not be permitted to rescind such an action this far into the operation of it. I'm afraid that's not a deep legal analysis at this point, but I don't think that's one that you would be recommended to rescind this late in the game. Thank you. Alder Rasmussen. Thank you. So I guess just for clarification, um, with regard to the WAS funding, it's essentially a carryover, right? Correct. So we're under contract. They didn't get all of the work done. So for unfinished work, we carry the money over. And when they do the work, we pay the bills that we've already committed to. Yes. Okay. That and then I guess my only other comment is that um, when we talk about um, you know these three nonprofits and we start to talk about WASA events in Main Street, bear in mind that those organizations are largely funded by room tax, um, which is money we disperse to them anyway. And so when we talked about this last time, the um, savings was identified as negligible. You might save a few hours, but you're not saving a ton of money. So in a budget that's you know upwards of you know pushing a hundred million dollars you're not going to make a serious taxpayer impact by, you know, essentially cutting off two organizations that you've been serving for a really long time with six weeks notice. So if we want to establish separate um, service agreements with those entities and consider them and negotiate with those folks, that would certainly happen separately in the finance committee as a separate contract. But this is certainly not the time to do it on the fly. So just my two cents. Thank you. Alder Ryan. Uh, thank you. Um, I guess, uh, Ann, could you clarify? I thought the $3.5 million was done under the previous council for WAS. Oh, $3.5 million? I think it was, wasn't it, Mary Ann? Yeah, the previous council approved the development agreement. So there was a development agreement in place, then we amended it. So. Um, has there is a possibility then that the city council could amend it? Say, if if you're saying it's 3.5 that was designated, 3.5 million year to date to spend 1.12, then uh, my calculation is that um, we would have 2.42 million left and if they did not spend that, that money should revert back to the city. Correct. Like I, out to them. as yeah. I said before, we're reimbursing them on a draw basis. So there's nothing for them to refund to us. It would just remain in the city's um, funds. 
But once they're done with the demolition, if there's any funds left over, it was designated for the demolition only. So if that is not spent, that money would re be returned to the city, correct? It, well, it wouldn't be returned because we would have never paid it to them because we're only reimbursing them once they have the expenditure. So there would be nothing to return. Okay. So it's on a pay for pay reimbursement go. basis. Yes. And so we still may be able to get some of that back, which correct. would be great. Yeah. Okay. Thank you on that. Um, Having done accounting for over two to three decades, um, I don't think it's a value of nothing. Um, I know it can cost uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars, depending on the size of the organization, or that you can get, um, you know, a, a very cheap software package. Uh, like Fund Easy or going ahead and using some of the off-the-shelf smaller ones that are advertised on TV and are under $100, $200. So, um, and that uh, this is something 147 other not-for-profits in our county are handling. And um, as executive directors, if they can't handle their own budget in writing checks for a small organization, then they've got lots of other problems, in my opinion. Uh, this is something that gives them su sufficient time to go ahead and do, and that especially because of the new accounting software and then running simultaneously, this is putting a lot of burden on the accounting department and there's no need for them to learn the new system when they could be working on a pretty small system that could be done on their home computer or their work computer on one computer. So, or they could look at uh, hiring that out. And um, it is long overdue. And if 147 other not-for-profits can do it, I'm sure these two that do not have any contracts should be able to do it. Thank you. Alder Killian. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted to, uh, so it's not an enigma, uh, let uh, the, uh, the council and the public know why I'd raised and highlighted the WAS uh, developer payment in the budget and uh, simply uh, from District 3's standpoint, and it has been this way to date, uh, do not feel that it is appropriate to attach public dollars to this particular development or project. Uh, all my votes have reflected that in, in the past and I want to say that uh, I really thank uh, my colleagues uh, and the finance committee and staff who, who put this budget together because I think there was some really great work uh, with this budget but it is uh, simply because and uh, if I if this would come up in any other situations the uh, the vote would be the same I, I just do not feel that it is appropriate to be attaching public funds to this thank you thank you All right I think we are ready to vote on the budget as amended You may begin voting. Motion passes eight to three. Thank you very much. Uh, next item on our agenda is file number 211106. It's a resolution from CISM setting a public hearing regarding vacating and discontinuing the up unpaved alley bounded by Bertha Street, Lakeview Drive, Mount View Drive, and Elmwood Boulevard. I would entertain a motion. Motion by Rasmussen, second by Larson. Any discussion? Not seeing any. Begin voting. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. We are now on to file number 211110. It's another resolution from CISM approving a bicycle pedestrian trail easement with Third Street Holdings, LLC. At 151 Mackendo Street, I would entertain a motion. I have a motion by Wadinski and a second by Peckham. Any discussion? Did I? Oh. Uh, oh, I read both of them. Okay, so the first one that we're going to talk about is 
Uh, file number 211108. It's a resolution from CISM approving a bicycle pedestrian trail easement with Aspirus Buildings, Inc. at 902 North 3rd Street. Motion. Wodinski, second by Peckham. Any discussion? Alder Ryan. Um, can it be explained exactly where this is located? Is it part of the McIndoe Street closing or not? I'll let um, Mr. Lindman. It crosses the property uh, that Aspirus has, yeah. With McIndoe. Correct. Yep. The, the portion of McIndoe that was vacated. A piece okay. of that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other discussion or questions? Okay, I think we're ready to vote. You may begin voting. Motion passes 10 to 1. All right, now we're on to file number 211110, resolution from CISM approving a bicycle pedestrian trail easement with 3rd Street Holdings, LLC at 151 McIndoe Street. Motion by Wadinski, second by Neil. Any discussion? I don't see any. Begin voting. Motion passes unanimously. All right, thank you. Uh, next up is file number 201109. It's a resolution from Finance Committee authorizing the 2021 budget modification for intersection improvement study and to support the 10% local match for highway safety improvement program. Motion by Rasmus and second by Herbst. Any discussion? We're just getting our technology in order here. the motions again? I had a motion by Rasmussen and a second by Herbst. One moment. Okay, you can vote, please. Motion passes, but Deb did not vote. Alder Ryan, did you want to vote? Okay, it just didn't register. Did she say yes? Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. Then it passed unanimously. All right. Thank you. We are now on to file number 201109, a resolution from Finance Committee authorizing the 2021 budget modification for a police freezer replacement. Entertain a motion. I have a motion by Herbst, and I have a second by Wadinski. Now I know what's going on. Okay, who was the motion? Uh, which, this one? Yeah. I had the motion by Herbst and the second by Wadinski. Okay. Yeah, this is the one that we it's just did. Please freeze her. Oh, know. it's, it's just, just confused. Yeah. Okay, got it. Yeah. Begin voting. It's the computer's fault. Yeah. <laughs> motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. We are now on to file number 211111. It's a resolution from the Human Resources Committee approving the creation of a utility worker position in the Department of Public Works. Entertain a motion. I have a motion by Larson, and I have a second by Neil. Any discussion? Okay. You may begin voting. Motion passes unanimously. All right, thank you. Uh, file number 120219, a resolution from the Human Resources Committee approving the amendment to the Employee Handbook, Section 5.06, Compensatory Time. I would entertain a motion. A motion by Watson, second by Larson. Any discussion? Nope. Begin voting. Begin voting. 
Motion passes unanimously. Okay, thank you. We are now on to file number 170603, another resolution from the Human Resources Committee approving reinstatement of uh, benefits for the city assessor. I would entertain a motion. I have a motion by Herbst and a second by Wadinsky. Any discussion? Okay. Begin voting. Motion passes unanimously. All right, thank you. Uh, next up, file number 120219, another resolution from the Human Resources Committee approving the amendment to the employee handbook section 5.08, shift differential. Entertain motion by Rasmussen, second by Larson. Any discussion? Not seeing anybody. Begin voting. Motion passes unanimously. All right, thank you. File number 211112. It's an ordinance from the Plan Commission rezoning 415 South 1st Avenue from an urban mixed use zoning district to a planned unit development district and approving the general development plan to allow for a 50 unit multifamily apartment building. I would have a motion by Neil Second by Killian. Any discussion? Uh, Alder Peckham. Thank you. Uh, I was unable to make the Planning Commission meeting, so or I would have asked uh, there, but uh, it does seem like we're really pinching on the parking on this, uh, and I really, truly support the project, but I'm just wondering if there's anybody that can, uh, maybe Mr. Lenz, uh, who I guess is with us virtually, um, in terms of having, I think we have 52 parking spaces and 50 rental units. Uh, that's going to get, seems like that's going to be a big problem. All right, I'm going to let maybe uh, Mr. Lenz, if, if you have a, an update you could share. Thank you. Sure. Um, we also have the developer on, on the call here, too, that can help explain things. But um, so the the planning or the zoning district here is planned unit development, which is a flexible zoning district, as you realize. Um, and so there is no set parking minimum. Um, you know, we, we can be flexible. We can look for parking off the site as well. That was a solution that I noted in the staff report that there is property available uh, in the area that could be used for, for overflow parking for this development. Uh, I think the developer was making the point too that, you know, this is the maximum number of units that they are looking for. It's likely that they would actually, uh, you know, uh, amend that downward slightly once they get into more detailed site planning. Uh, right now, they're just trying to establish the maximum zoning that we would allow, um, and then again, as the detailed plans move forward, we work with them when they come back for they're going to have to come back with a specific plan for the site this is just the general plan so we're really at this stage just approving the use which is residential and the approximate density for the site so that's what we're weighing in on it if we're okay with that um, assuming we are then we can again work with the developers on the specifics such as you know the exact number of units, whether they can fit additional parking on the site or whether they would look to accommodate more parking off the site somewhere. Um, we sort of acknowledge that it is pretty tight, but, you know, again, I think plan commission was okay with the approximate density and again, the use, which is multifamily versus, you know, the commercial that was there before. So I guess that's what I have for now. Thank you. I don't know, Trent, I would. I guess I would open it up if you wanted to say anything. Sure. Uh, can everybody hear me? Yes. Thank you. I apologize. My uh, camera isn't working. But um, after the last Planning Commission meeting, I did reach out to the adjacent landowner um, across First Street with kind of a triangular parcel with a billboard on it currently. Um, I've been keeping in touch with him just about the status of um, his willingness to sell that parcel. And he's still at the table, and we're waiting to see uh, what happens with the zoning approval. But our architect laid out that uh, particular parcel and derived 17 extra parking spaces. So, I mean, 
I think there are, so currently we have 52 underground, which is one to one, every unit would get a slip underground and then the property manager in a floating space for a maintenance technician. And then we'd have 17 presumably across the street. Um, each of the 10 three bedrooms would be given a, an extra space by right. And then we'd have seven floating spaces for um, some of the two bedroom tenants if they really need it or potentially visitor parking spots. But the idea is, is that at a bare minimum, every unit would have a slip underground and that every three bedroom would have at least one parking space across the street. Thank you. Does that answer your question, Mr. Alder Peckham? Um, yeah, I'm glad to hear that uh, we're not locking in uh, at this point and that efforts are gonna continue to try to do better on that. Thank you. Thank you. Alder Larson. Thank you, Madam Chair. The way I read this, it says the ordinance for rezoning and improving the project. Is that correct? So we're given not only the 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 okay to rezone the property, but to go ahead with the 50, the construction of the buildings as well? Yeah, it's the general plan. So once they come to it with a precise plan, we'll see it again. Am I correct, Brad? Yeah, with the, the PUD, we have to approve a general plan. We can't just approve a PUD with no plan. So we're approving a general plan. They will need to come back with a specific plan once that is uh, finalized in the future. Is Trent there? Are you still there, Trent? Yes, I am. I just want to say that, you know, I watched every minute of the economic and development meetings, and, and I want to say I was quite impressed with your presentation. And um, I, too, have concerns um, about kind of like putting a watermelon into a banana peel, but um, as I did when, when with, with Thomas Street, but I am going to go ahead with this because I, we need affordable housing, you know, and, and you know, I'm sure uh, the aesthetics can, are, you know, this is a, like anything else, a work in progress. And I want to say thank you for coming forward with this project. And I just wish that your competitor would have been as professional as you. Thank you. Alder well, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Alder Ryan. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I just was going to mention, Trent, um, I think you said First Street, and it's actually First Avenue. Um, so it's you're talking about the security realty property, I believe, and that um, it does seem like it, it would be a great reuse of this property and uh, allow additional parking. Um, we have something similar like that uh, that Lockery is doing on Elm Street where uh, for the, the, the construction they're doing right now for their new building right near um, the, the plaza, um, they have additional parking that they're planning on the south side of Elm Street. And for other, other large metro areas, um, especially like in Chicago or in Milwaukee or Madison, it's very common that you may be uh, parked a few blocks away in order to find affordable uh, parking. So uh, just being across the street, if, if this can work out for you, I think is a, a good win. And thank you again. Um, um, I've been very impressed with what I've seen of the Riverview Towers renovation as well as uh, having been in the Cannonburg after it was remodeled. And I'm looking forward to maybe some other projects in Wausau besides the landmark and this new project. Hopefully uh, you'll be sticking around with some other projects in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Alder Neal. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just to clarify, uh, the Alder uh, mentioned uh, security really. A realty, but uh, the site in question is the uh, former West Side Battery on uh, First Avenue, and the extra parking that they're looking at would be directly west across the street, uh, across First Avenue, uh, which they're looking into. So, thank you. Thank you. All right, I think we are ready to vote. Begin voting. Motion passes unanimously. 
Thank you. All right, this is the part where we uh, are asked to suspend the rules. Um, I, I would entertain a motion to suspend the rules 6B filing and 12A referral of resolution. This does require a two-thirds vote. I have a motion by Neil and a second by Watson. Uh, any? You don't get to discuss this, I don't think. Begin voting. Motion passes eight to two. Okay, thank you. Uh, we are now on file number 010725. It's an ordinance about redistricting the boundaries of aldermanic districts and wards. Uh, I would entertain a motion. I'm sorry. Two people voted though. Nine to two. Nine to two. Nine to two. Yes. Okay, so uh, I would entertain a motion for file number 010725, an ordinance redistri redistricting the boundaries of aldermanic districts and wards. Motion by Neil. Second by Martins. Uh, any discussion? Okay. voting. Motion passes 10 to 1. All right, thank you. We are now on to file number 211113. It's a resolution from the Finance Committee approving the master agreement between Short Elliott Hendrickson and the City of Wausau for Engineering and Consulting Services. I would entertain a motion. I have a motion by Watson and I have a second by uh, Rasmussen. Any discussion? Alder Peckham. Yeah, uh, it might have been because I'd already read 100 pages of <laughs> packet, but uh, I didn't quite follow uh, what this is for, and there was mention of the McClellan Skyway and connecting stair elevator tower, uh, and I hadn't heard anything about that for a long time. So I'm wondering if it's authorization to uh, pick up work on that or exactly what we're doing with this resolution. What, what we're doing is approving the master agreement with Short Elliott Hendrickson, which contains all of the legal terms and conditions by which any future work we endeavor to undertake with them will abide by. So it was first done when they were talking about the Dudley Tower back, I think, in 2015, was what brought Short Elliott Hendrickson forward because they put out an RFP at the direction of the ED committee and they got five responses. The committee recommended selecting Short Elliott Hendrickson and when the resolution went to council, it approved a budget modification. So there's never any mention in the resolution of Short Elliott Hendrickson being approved or approving the general terms and conditions of their legal contract which I believe requires council approval beyond just rebudgeting money. The thing is, it's a master agreement that covers any time we want to contract with them. So now it's come up four times for Scott Bores because he's had an engineer there helping him with site survey and installation and so forth on the water tower on 28th Avenue. So with each uh, site application he gets, they draft what they call a supplemental letter agreement, which has no legal terms in it at all. It's just a description of the individual project, the scope, and what they're going to charge for it. So it's usually hovering around 10000 or a little under, which I don't think then each individual supplemental letter agreement would require council approval once the master agreement is approved. So it's just an overall master um, professional services contract that they prepared in response to an RFP for the engineering services for the Dudley Tower. It has not been used to my knowledge since then except for these four short letter agreements or supplemental letter agreements for telecom services on the water tower. The reference to the Skyway is just how we established a relationship with the company. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, any further discussion? Alder Ryan. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, for for those that were not here at the finance, it, it just happens 
way back when um, Jim Rosenberg was part of that group. I had a chance to talk with him after one of the meetings about the Dudley Tower, but he's no longer associated. But um, just for your information, thank you. All right, I believe we are ready to vote. I see no more people ready to discuss. Begin voting. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. The last item here, we have public comment and suggestions. If there's anybody that didn't get it out before, you are welcome to approach the podium. Okay. Thank you very much. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion by Watson. Second by Peckham. All those in favor can signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you very much. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank